because of jail. Hey, I do have something I want to say to you. Uh, wait, I, wait, are we starting this off? Okay. I don't know. Episode 57 continues and you have something you want to say to I me. I have something to say to you. I ha- I was stopped twice this week by people. It's weird. People at my work listen to our podcast. At Hardee's? A- at Hardee's. <laughs> yep. The guy in the, the, you know, the guy in the fryer. Yeah. But my friend Carl, Carl comes up Tell to me. Tell me you call him Hot Carl. <laughs> he is called Hot Carl. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so Carl comes up to me today, and he asks me about your Dave Couye <laughs> voice that you Dude, did. Dude, we got so much email about that. He thought- So much email about the, my Dave Couye voice. He thought we did a drop. Like, he thought we <laughs> spliced in that no. voice. And I said, no, it was you. And you I said- again? Or do you want to punch me when I do it? <laughs> I said that me and you sit about six feet apart. Dude, we're three feet apart. And I, but I said I couldn't reach you, <laughs> and so he was like, he, he so Is yeah. That mic made out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can maybe get away with Is that wood. Because he always look, he always takes the puppet and looks back and forth <laughs> as if someone's gonna like sneak up on him and try to goose him. <laughs> so so Carl Carl Barreto. Carl Barreto, that one was for you. So yeah, hey, well, Carl, I, you thanks. just you just made me endure another. Carl Barreto, <laughs> is your head made out of wood? <laughs> oh. That's funny that he thought I was that good at it. Yeah, yeah there's a, I got a couple. There's a couple of uh, voices I can do, but most of them all sound like I'm German. Yeah, like every time I had to imitate somebody on Indian accent, I'd always have to be like, uh, "This is thank you so much for these beats. They're so fine. Thank you so much." <laughs> Thank you for everything you've given me. I appreciate you. <laughs> and then I started sounding like Gunter from The Simpsons. Remember right, him? Right. I begged you to call on me first. I cannot eat my chocolate fingers. My Vienna chocolate fingers. I cannot do it. Uh, okay, so did you oh. see this? Um, this big big news for me. I, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I act like I'm a fan of something that I'm really not a big fan of anymore. But Craigslist this week... Got rid of their personal section. Did you see this? No. The reason I say this is because they that includes uh, misconnections oh. and casual encounters. Had you ever read those in the past? Because they're gone now. Yes. Because they're doing it because there's a bill that's steamrolling through Congress that would go after any website that could be used for sex trafficking. So oh, good. They're doing it all out of the goodness of their heart. In other words, so they don't get in trouble. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. If it has anything to do with sex trafficking, let's shut her down. Well, yeah. I, I mean, 100%. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, I'm not going to do counterpoint to this. <laughs> no, I all think right. we should keep it going because, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> we can all make a few bucks Here's on the it. thing that most people I don't think understand about a lot of sports shows. Before they get on the mic, a lot of times they'll have like a point counterpoint. So they'll be like, okay, I'm going to say the Lions suck. You're going to say that you think they're going to win the Super Bowl. And right. then they go on the air and then they argue the heck out of it. But really, right. at the end of the day, they've discussed it beforehand. I, I hope people listening to that have realized that. Like, I hope oh, you're not gosh. 30. 35 years old and you think that the radio station that you listen to <laughs> has a two guys that have complete opposite <laughs> point of views on everything in life do you think they um discuss this in the interviews do you think they had to get two guys who one likes mustard and one likes mayonnaise right and then one likes the tigers and one likes the blue jays and one thinks that the Arizona Cardinals are going to the Super Bowl, and the other one thinks the Lions are going to the Super Bowl. Just like the yeah. odd couple. No, I don't. Yeah, but, it, but the thing is, people don't realize that, though. So, yeah, so they got rid of the misconnections, but I'm telling you, as somebody who's a hopeless romantic, I really am, and I believe wholeheartedly that I met my soulmate and we got married 16 years ago, there is that part of me that would always read misconnections and just hope that someone was like, you were in a black Silverado at the Speedway <laughs> on M59. <laughs> You were picking your nose. Yeah. Tell me what color. Yeah, you were knuckle dress. deep. <laughs> you were knuckle co- deep in your nose. <laughs> and <laughs> tell me what color dress I had on. You were you were knuckle Shh, deep in your nose yes. with your head cocked to the side because <laughs> in order to to hook hook you know, the the frontal lobe, you had to turn your your head slightly to the side. Yeah. So yeah, they got rid no, of that whole thing. Yeah, that's good. I used to read those as as uh, like as jokes. You know, you, you read. That well, they stuff were just so bad. Was, I mean, yeah. here's the thing: you realize how pathetic people are, really. And I don't, I myself included. Believe me, if I had to start dating in 2018, I don't even know what I would do. Like, I really don't. Like, you met your girlfriend that you're currently dating in high school. 
But we never talked. Right, exactly. You met, yeah. I, mean, I would say, you, would you say, do you guys even classify that you met in high school? Uh, no, we classified as we both went to the same high school. I knew of her, she knew of me, but never had a conversation with her. You never talked to her before? No, she says we had one conversation during a, uh, our school did a dance show, so all the girls... Excuse me. All the girls would like shocker. It's a dance show, and it's nothing but girls doing everything, right? And then like <clears throat> a few of the fellas of the high school would be like the MCs for the night, right? And so uh, she she was one of the dancers, and so she says we had a conversation, but I don't believe she talked to me because <laughs> I would have remembered it because I thought she was drop dead gorgeous in high school, and you were pizza face Jill. Yeah, exactly. Hey, for the record. Best friends with Pizza Face Cal. So, I mean, <laughs> trust me, I'm not... For those out there that are thinking that um, I'm taking shots at Joe, uh, let's just say two words. Calamity cut. Calamity cut. And we we both had... This was before the days of proactive. <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> And let's just say the sebum was yeah. running thick. <laughs> it was running thick. Did you see the video, that, or excuse me, the picture I posted of my engagement photo this week? Yes, yes. Find it on the Cal and Company. Uh, Wendy me, doesn't look a Cal day. Cal and Company, what am I talking about? Cal Cagno Radio Instagram. Wendy doesn't look like a day older. No, I know. Like, the, the that photo, it could have been, I mean, other than you, because <laughs> your hair looks ridiculous. He, someone put on there, like, you look like the lead singer of... Um, uh, what's that? The, Creed? No, the band that's is so far away when I feel the snake bite into <laughs> God my smack? Yeah. Okay. You look like the lead singer of God smack. Sully. Yeah. You look like him. But she doesn't look like she aged a day. Yeah, that's what everyone says that she Even looks Even coming in today, seeing her in them yoga pants. Holy <laughs> smoke. <laughs> I'll just tell you you said that because you know she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. why I got away with yeah, it. Well, yeah, you can. That's why yeah. I got away with no, it. No, she, um, yeah, she came out today in those yoga pants. I was like, well, hello, Canada. <laughs> right. Hello. You were like. Uh, I'm like, hey, how's hey, it going? Hey, did this, uh, is the is the the <laughs> gymnastic center doing parents night tonight? Or? Yeah, I can't imagine, though, going back to Misconnection for a second, though, being so desperate to meet up again with someone that you've decided to go to Craigslist to make that happen. No, but what I find weird is that you saw someone drive by you or you had a missed connection and you post it on Craigslist. Hoping they see it. It's like, why not just write it on a helium balloon and let it go? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> Throw it in a bottle and chuck it in the St. Clair, yeah. the Detroit River. Like Yell it into the sky. What are the percentages? I know, yell it into the sky. What are the percentages that people have seen something on misconnections and and it was them? Yeah. <laughs> we were like, wait a minute. Like, I was in the Kroger parking lot today and I was wearing green wait pants. Wait a second. Wait a second. I really, you know what? I was standing next to those lemons. Right. Over at Trader Joe's. And yeah, I did I did catch eye can't contact with somebody. And I am gay. That was the other one. We used to read them on 80 on X all the time. We would have uh, Tony Rankin, our smooth talking traffic guy, who was like, hey, everybody, I'm Tony Rankin. I think he's still on the air. He's awesome. But we would send it to him and he would record them. But they were all, he was like, you guys are crazy. I'm like, we didn't make these up. But it'd be like, <laughs> I don't know if you're gay, but if you are, I'd like to, you know, do the following to you. It's like you were my delivery driver from Jets Pizza. I don't know if you're gay, but if you are, blah blah blah. It's like, can you imagine being the delivery guy and be like, yeah, you know what? Someone wants to do the following to me. I I'm into that. Oh. You cared so much about me that you never even asked for my phone number. You went to Craigslist, and you're not turned off by the fact that I'm a pizza driver. <laughs> no offense if you're a pizza driver. No, no, no. But no. like, you know, I mean, even I think even you know that that's probably not a career why is it though if Stop someone gap. says delivering pizzas that is that lower than working at like a fast food restaurant no i don't think it's low i don't I th either i think any job is honorable right yes. like when you go even drug uh, dealer no <laughs> no i mean if you want to look at drug dealer honorable no but if you got to do something to pay the bills you know what i mean you can't fault a guy for providing for his family now if you if you want to get into the drug dealer thing you're rolling the dice because if you get caught right. you're screwed so right. as long as you understand those rules yes. you know like hey i'm gonna do this till i get caught i can go to prison but in the meantime i'm providing for my family although whenever i've been uh 
been able to peek behind that curtain, I don't see drug dealers necessarily getting on with their lives. Yeah, it's, it's not like you a, know? like you said, it's not like a stopgap where you're like, listen, I'm going to sell weed, then I'm going to sell some coke, then I'm going to sell some, you know, Molly or some crystal meth or whatever for a while. And then, then I'm going to invest in a yeah, laundromat. Yeah, then I'm going to go sell that and yeah, then I'm going to go to business school. Yeah, then go to business school yeah. and and come up with like a prepackaged meal company. Like that doesn't <laughs> happen. Like everybody just they they sell they sell, you sell weed and dope yeah. and you get your Jordans and you know some you know I don't know better weed <laughs> like you sell crappy weed so you can afford better weed. Speaking of weed, and that's it for a second. My wife she got back from Denver. Okay, so she flew into Denver. She said like her taxi driver was like, "Do you want me to take you to the dispensaries?" Because like weed's kind of legal there. It's not kind of. It is. Okay, so how yeah. legal is it though? It's legal, but it's, it's, it's but recreational federal, use. But doesn't federal law say that it's not? Well, federal law allows states to Just burped in the do their own deal. I mean, if the U.S. government wanted to come in and bust all these dispensaries and stuff like that in Colorado, could they? Yes. But the United States doesn't do that because they give those freedoms to each state. Oh, I see. Okay. Because she said the first thing they asked her if she wanted to go to the dispensary, and she's like, no, I'm good. And then she said she was driving down. Later on, she rented, ended up running the car. She said she was driving down the highway, and she was like, what is that? She's like, it smells like a skunk got loose, because that's kind of our joke. That was always the joke with me and Rusty when we used to be on Cal and Company together. We'd be like backstage at a show, and we'd be like, oh better call the exterminator. I think a scone's gotten loose on one of those tour buses. Right. It smells like there might be a, some sort of vermin in the back here. Right. I var- think Tommy Chong <laughs> brought a skunk up in here or some really good coffee. <laughs> Some Either, strong coffee yeah. grounds are but up But she in said here. you could smell the plants from the highway. Like, you could smell where they were growing. And she was like, what in the heck? And then- See, that that's what drives me nuts. Like, I mean, I understand, like, the whole, like, medical marijuana Medicinal thing. Medicinal stuff, yeah. yeah. But, like, the thing with, like, alcohol, like, if some dude's going to sit in his house and booze it up, fine. I don't know. Like, it doesn't affect me. But even people that are like, like if I have neighbors that are like burning one, like you smell it. Right. And and that's the thing. Like I think if it's like legalized for recreational use, it's just, you're going to just smell it nonstop. It's going to be nasty. Well, what I wonder is like, okay, so let's say they do make it legal here in Michigan and they just say, okay, it is absolutely legal. Like we're talking legal, legal. You don't even need the card. You can just do it out in the open. Just like you could see anybody smoking a Paul Mall without any sort of filter, they could then be smoking the famous Marlboro Green, right? You know, right. you've heard those stories where like- Right, the uh, urban legend. Yeah, the urban legend where they're like, uh, Marlboro's already gotten the patent for Marlboro Green. <laughs> right. So that when it comes to legal, I mean, they, I've heard they've already gotten the package ready like right. it's ready they're it's just ready set to go they're set to go all they need to do is just roll it out why do always oh, stoners what will stoners talk about that's what daniel tosh's famous line if they ever legalized weed what would stoners talk about because that's all they talk about is legalizing weed right right, right but okay right. so will you be standing at you know your local taco bell and like walk outside and have to walk through just a big old Wait, i already do of, of weed smoke i do already you? do yes. do you the the t- i'm gonna call them out the taco bell and clausen on, well, maybe it's in Troy, the one just south of 15 Mile Road on Main Street. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The employees there just spend <laughs> every moment they can in the dumpster area. So you know how like when you, they take the garbage out, yeah. they open up that gate, and then it's the dumpster? Right. Well, they go in there, and then they shut the gate. Oh. And it's just you just see plumes of like <laughs> weed smoke coming up, and you're like in the drive through and all you can smell is weed. But yeah, if if it ever becomes legal, that's what's gonna suck. Is like I don't care if you're doing like if it's legal, it's legal. Right. My, my opinion doesn't matter. You know right. what I mean? So if it's legal, it's legal. But just like everything else, like cigarettes are legal. But we've gotten to the point where we don't want secondhand smoke. We have no smoking sections. Right. We have all that stuff. So for me, I don't understand if someone can't sit here and smoke a cigarette. Why? They're, they're not going to be able to sit there and smoke weed. Right, yeah, that's never going to be. Like, you could have a smoking section and maybe you could smoke weed in there. Because I'll tell you what, if you go to, like, Ford Field and you go into that smoking section or walk by it, it's nothing but weed. Yeah. Like, people are passing joints. People are passing water bongs. <laughs> right. People have, like, the vaporizer that looks like, you know. <laughs> your, gas mask. Yeah, Kylo Ren. <laughs> like, the Kylo Ren mask. It's all hooked up. <laughs> yeah, that's what people are doing. Yeah. What I think is funny, though, about, like, you know. You should talk about weed. That's one thing. And then the other night I was at a pool hall. Yes, I went to a pool hall. 
call on Sunday night for a meeting about refing because I ref Jeez. high school football. Yeah, don't get me going. I'm not sure what was going on in this pool hall, but there was about seven people in there, and it was probably 6,000 square feet, so it's kind of like, oh, I don't really know that there's a lot of people. Every time you start looking around, Patrick Swayze <laughs> yeah. was like, hey, eyes on your own table. You were like, yes, sir. What was his name? The Come black on. guy was playing lap guitar <laughs> behind the chicken wire. All right, what's his name? Come on. Patrick Swayze? Patrick Swayze's name in the thing. In Roadhouse? Come on, dude. Uh, I don't Dalton. know. Dalton. Dalton. Yeah, yeah, remember? He go. would just kick everyone's ass. Rip that guy's throat but out. Dude, he did, yeah. He was Dalton, dude. And yeah, and um, Jeff, <laughs> not Jeff Buckley, Angel Eyes was his song. The guy was blind. He was yeah. playing. I, I, uh, his song was Angel I, Eyes. I, I ate my next way. to him at a. Uh, you did? Yeah, at a pancake house in uh, Nashville. Did you t- talk to him about Angel Eyes? No, I didn't. I was like, hey, that's not the guy Jeff from Buckley. House. Jeff, um, shoot, what is his name? Burkett. No, that's the guy we went to high school with. No, um, Jeff, I can't think of what his name Davis. is. Davis. No, that's the other guy we went to high school with who used to be my old roommate. <laughs> Keep going. Weeks. <laughs> weeks. Yeah, Jeff another, Weeks. Another guy we went to high school Jeff with. Weeks. Yeah, it's, no, it's also not someone. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I would, but we Tello. Was, no, Jeff, Jeff Tello, Tello, I went to high school with. <laughs> Went to junior high with you. Went to Adams. Good guy. Good guy. I went to Churchill, boy. Okay, anyway. Yeah, boy. Okay, so anyways, let's talk about um, vaping for a second because that was what I started to say. We were playing. We were watching these guys play pool. I've never seen so much smoke come out of a human being in my entire life. There's no way the amount of smoke that went into him came out not tenfold. Like, I don't know what was coming out of this guy's mouth. It was supposedly vapor, but I don't know how this is legal. No, I don't know how this... How people think this is healthy. <laughs> Have you ever like been you went you go to like a tiger game or something like that and you go down downtown Detroit and the manholes are just like steam coming out of the manholes? Well, there's a reason, you know, I, I at one point like I, I I drove by in the winter and I was like, Man, if I was homeless, I'd be standing by that thing because mm-hmm. it, it's got the nice warm steam coming out of it. And then after a couple of you know seconds, I think, well, no, because that's like instant pneumonia. Right, yeah, whatever it's in it. So with the vaping thing, I, I don't understand like when people, at what point mankind is going to say, maybe it's just not healthy to put crap in our lungs. Right. Like smoking didn't pan out too well. Right. You know, nothing that like we've inhaled into our lungs, it's like, you know what, these make, these make them healthier. <laughs> Other than a nebulizer with medicine, I don't know right. what, you know. Well, I always look at the the initial reaction of your body the first time you try to inhale a cigarette. You cough uncontrollably, choke, <laughs> right. sometimes throw up, gag. Right. Maybe that should tell you, like, mm, this is probably not for you. Right. But then you're like, no, 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 shh, body, shh, Quiet I got down. you. Go ahead. Let's try it again. Quiet down. Because if I was to put lavender, orange peels, and, <laughs> and you know, uh, cumin in my lungs, yeah. that would kill. Yeah. But if I smoke it into my lungs, <laughs> it's probably pretty healthy for my lungs. It's all natural. Yeah, what it's is? It's natural ingredients. Dude, you're a hater. What, do you not love Mother Earth? Right, seriously. Well, guess what? When you burn a house down, that's all natural, too. It's wood and it's brick and it's burning. But you don't want to sit there and inhale that. Hey. Don't knock before you try it. Right. That's going to be the new thing. <laughs> hey, man. I've been huffing bricks. Right. We're all going over to Sozo's house. We're going to burn it down and sit around and inhale it. What we're learning today is how do you say, listen to me in Spanish. Let's get started. Escúchame. Now you know how to ask someone to listen to you. Muy bien. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. Between the breaks, we were doing our best to crash test dummies. Okay, we're going to each do it and see if we can do it better. Go ahead. I'm sure you're going to be able to do it. Once there was this boy who got <laughs> into an accident and couldn't go to school. Okay, do I have, have seen the same lines? Once there was this kid who got into got an it. accident and couldn't come to school, but when they finally came, his hair had turned from black into bright white. The crash test dummies, Canada's yeah. own, like they had that one hit. I think. No, I think they had two. Did they? Yeah. What was I their think, other song? Um. I can't remember, but I think they had two. 
Was it Jet? Do 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 do. Jet. No, I think it was like thunder, <laughs> lightning, and the thunder. That song I get stuck in my head. That's all I sing all day long. Every time I play that on DVD, like the whole day, I'm like, Yeah, I love Twenty One Pilots. Thunder. It's Imagine Dragons, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> So listen to this story. I thought that you would find this humorous. Okay. All the people out there that are looking for love in all the wrong places, take this guy's advice on how to get love, but just know that he's going to jail. So just, (laughs) it starts out with a love story, tales all the time. Yep. And then turns into that he's going to jail. Okay. 24-year-old guy from New Zealand. Okay. He went to a woman's house back in September of 2015 and told her he'd been attacked and forced to drink poison. He said the only way he could survive is to sweat it out. So he also happened to have this email with him from the people who poisoned him saying the woman would have to have sex with him repeatedly to save his life. Sure. She believed this. She's an idiot. She had sex with him many times, but the emails kept coming for the next few months while they were still having sex. Not for months straight, but he kept coming back telling her that she needed to keep having sex with him until this mysterious poison would leave his body. Right. She started noticing there were some strange problems with the emails, including tons of spelling mistakes. <laughs> Two of them referred to the guy using a nickname that only he had been using for himself. And after three or four different times of them having sex uh, and these emails showing up, she finally confronted him. He then attacked her. He was then arrested. He's going to jail for the attack, not for the emails and her being duped into having sex. Well, right. No, that, that should be the case. Yeah. So, Absolutely. So there you go. This guy decided to go for the Gusto. Hail Mary. Yeah, he went for the Hail Mary. And we used to talk about it years ago. There was like this thing called the Naked Man that uh, a friend of mine would pull. And apparently this was on How I Met Your Mother or something. But I had a friend of mine who, if he would go on a date with a girl and they ended up back at her apartment or his apartment or their house or whatever... He decided to throw caution to the wind and just decided to take off all his clothes and would come back into the room and be like, okay, are we going to do something? Yeah. Now, he knew that there was a 50-50 chance that she would say, you're a total creep, please leave, or it was then going to speed things up. But there was no texting back then. Yeah, maybe that was That was old school texting. Really? You think you- Because now, like, everyone sends a picture- and says this like is Like you what- know what you're getting before you you know <laughs> before you get to the store. You know, you already know the groceries mm-hmm. before you get to the store. So you can make you can choose, you can pick and choose what you want. Back then you just had to throw cards on the wind. Yeah. And you had to come out like, is it drafty in here? <laughs> It got warm in here quick. Yeah, but see, then you think about somebody like, um, what's his name, Uh, the comedian, what's his name, Louis Uh C.K. Like, he kind of did the same thing, sort of through Caution of the Wind, sort of like the Harvey Weinstein. And the Naked Man, which I thought was a really good idea, could be foreseen as maybe a little bit over the line of what people wanted, where they're like, listen, I just wanted to come back and play some euchre with you, some two-handed euchre. Right. Or one-handed euchre, or two. I, I don't know. Whatever it's called. Euchre. Yeah. If you're were interested, you were interested in something else, then I didn't know that that's what we were doing. Right. But yeah, you kind of got to give this guy credit though that he was smart enough to get these emails printed up. You know what? If if he's got the hustle down, <laughs> you know you can't you can't fault him for having the hustle. Right. And she seems like. Not the smartest peanut in the turd. I mean, she is, uh, yeah, she, yeah, she's not the sharpest nut in the turd. Yeah. But she, it's like, come on. Like, you know, you're a grown woman. If he's like, oh my gosh, I got to sweat this out. Like, if, if someone came knocking on my door tomorrow, some woman was frantic, and she's like, oh my gosh, I, I had this poison, same thing, poison my body, I have to sweat this out. Yeah, I wouldn't be like, I'm well, thinking like, I'm not going to be able to work up a sweat enough <laughs> Any like any way that you have in mind, let's get you to a sauna. Well, yeah, if you got to sweat something out, I can't imagine that you know having sex with me was going to like you said work up such a lather right. that you're that you're not sweating out. Now, what happens to the poison after it leaves your body? I'm not trying to be selfish, but I think then it's going to be all over me. Right. And also, what type of person poisons another human being? Emails them and then tells them how to get rid of it. Right. So specifically, where it's like, hey, listen, here's the deal. We've poisoned you for no real reason, like just because we just did. Nunzo. Yeah, right. we don't know. We, I'm not going to tell you why. We don't want any money. We don't want any. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Right, nothing. I'm just going to tell you it's poison. 
<laughs> it's poison. It's poison. 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 Never trust a big button to smile. Poison. Right. Yeah. So it's poison. And then we're going to also tell you how to get rid of it. And it all has to do with sweating. Right. Because we all know from uh, kids shows growing up, all poison has an antidote. <laughs> All poison has an antidote. Yeah, you have to just find it, yeah. drink it quickly, and then within thirty seconds you feel better. I would think sweating it out would be worse because you would getting it, you'd be getting it pumping through. Like you have to get your body sweating, right? Which would mean your heart would be right. Your, your heart would, get, and you're pumping more through your. See, you're system. thinking not to get clinical here, but I was told because I'm allergic to nuts. We've talked about this a thousand times on my shows. I'm allergic to tree nuts. I'm not allergic to peanuts. So like, if I eat almonds, walnuts, stuff like this. I will die. It's not a matter of like, I don't like guacamole. Like, I can't eat it. I will die. And I have an EpiPen. So I have to like shoot it in my leg and then, you know, whatever. Then I hope to live or whatever. I was talking to a doctor and he said, the worst thing you can do after you've now used your EpiPen is to go work out because then that gets the the whatever in your stomach, the nuts in your stomach, (laughs) churning through, right? Like you said, you don't want that. Then it gets in your sweat. Then it gets all over your body. So this guy should have listened to his allergist and decided to not go with the, I need to work up a sweat. Why wouldn't you just go with, I need to have sex with the closest woman? Right. Why wouldn't you just go and knock on the door and do it old school courting? Hi, ma'am. I'm so and so. I saw you come out. You were doing some yard work yeah. the other day. I thought you were good looking. Do you mind if we go out? Uh, it, and and if you don't mind, could we just cut right to the chase and get busy? <laughs> we get busy. But instead, you've decided to come up with a fake hotmail account. Yeah. And then send yourself emails and refer to yourself probably in the third person with a right. nickname that quote only you call yourself. Right. Not trying to be stupid. But I'm like, like ma'am, no. See, ma'am, it says right here. Uh, Joe, Freight train. Joey. <laughs> Joey, you have this, Joey. It says freight train needs hot sex all night long. <laughs> right. right. The hot pumper. Right. It, Nobody it's... calls you that. I call myself that. I'm the hot pumper. <laughs> you must not know who I am. I'm Because I because I inflate bike tires all day <laughs> in a sweatshop. <laughs> I'm the hot pumper. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, get your mind out of the gutter, lady. <laughs> Let's get busy. I'm a tire inflator at Bell Tire. <laughs> they call me the hot pumper. Because I, I like sriracha, <laughs> and I pump up tires. And I get sweat with the best of them. Sometimes when the tire says it takes 45 <laughs> pounds of air, I put in 45, because I'm the hot pumper. Other guys I work with only stop at 42. When Derek brings in his four-alarm chili, I eat two bowls of it, and then I... And then I inflate tires, car tires, riding lawnmower tires, bicycle tires, because I'm the hot <laughs> One time, someone brought in a tire that couldn't take enough air, and I realized there was a nail in it. And then I pumped it. I hot pumped it hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, lady? Yeah, you get it. You're looking at me. You understand. It says it right here in this email. <laughs> From Hot Pumper at Hotmail.com. I know a lot of people don't use Hotmail in <laughs> this day and age, but I use AOL and Hotmail. And Hotmail. <laughs> M-A-L-E. <laughs> I'm Hot Pumper at Hotmail. M-A-L-E dot gov. <laughs> dot C-A. Dot That's o- Canada. Dot E-D-U. Because <laughs> it, it's just a... It's, it's slightly. They it's gave slightly it to me when adjusted. I graduated. I took a couple of college credits back in the day, and they just gave. They, they let you use that email address forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's it's hot pumper at <laughs> hotmail m a l e at eastern dot e d u forward slash <laughs> physics department <laughs> forward, forward slash contests <laughs> forward early education development program. <laughs> Because I, at one point, I was trying to be an elementary school teacher, but my past got in the way again. <laughs> they said I had a checkered past, and I wasn't allowed to be in the elementary school program. If you know what I mean. But that's cool, because like I said, now I, I hold down a <laughs> semi part time job over a Bell Tire, and I can get you in a pair of Firestones or. You think I can't fix all four tires? Pirellis for a good <laughs> price. <laughs> Sorry.